if you're building a car to race on the track or on the gravel, you're going to have to make some changes to the braking system. Why? Because car manufacturers primarily balance their braking systems by the size of the components that they put into the cars. Then you and I come along and totally change the weight balance of the car by stripping and lightening it, as well as fitting new components like larger discs, bigger calipers, even changing the master cylinders. Swap in a bigger motor and you've changed the weight balance of the car even more. Mega heavy braking at high speeds, whether on the tar or on the dirt, also demand much more of a braking system. Factory systems were never designed to handle these extreme demands and all these weight changes. That's why they need altering. So here's a look at the basics of altering a road car braking system for club work. And I'm using the example of a Honda DC2 Integra that I built for a mate. Before 19, about 1960, cars had the back wheels and the front wheels joined and you had a single master cylinder. And so you had the brake pedal on the single master cylinder operating all four wheels that were equally tied together. The problem with this system was that if you had a failure anywhere in the system, the whole system failed. And so then in about 1960 or so, the car manufacturers brought in uh, dual circuit braking and what they did was they linked the front wheels to a back wheel diagonally and they put in two master cylinders. So that way if one of the systems failed the other one would still operate and pull the car up in a straight line. The problem with this system which is in nearly every modern car today as far as what I'm concerned about doing, is I want to put an adjuster to adjust the back brakes off, which will in effect put more pressure on the front. The reason I want to do this is because I put a heavier engine in this car, I've taken over 160 kilos out of the car, so the weight balance has changed. And the way Honda proportion the braking between the front and the rear brakes is by the size of the brake components. So, uh, because I've changed the size of the discs here, I've changed the weight here and I've changed the weight there. That's heavier in there, that's lighter back there. This whole balance is out. Apart from any of that, on a circuit car or on a rally car, you want more braking in the front anyway. Um, but I can't put a brake adjuster in this setup because if I, you can't get a brake adjuster that's got two systems on it. And you can't put it in one wheel because it would just make the other wheel go crazy and you can't have two separate adjusters because if you had one of them slightly different to the other one one back wheel would break and lock and the other one wouldn't so that would be dangerous so what you have to do is I'm going to relink the front brakes together off one output out of the master cylinder I'm going to relink the back brakes to the second master cylinder I'm still going to have a dual circuit braking system, so if one system fails, the front or the back, the other one would still work. But doing it this way means that I can put a brake bias adjuster, which is really just a block off valve that you adjust by hand, in the system right next to the driver. And that way we can adjust the braking on the back so that we're getting more and more of the braking going to the front and less going to the back and we can get the balance Right, and there's actually a difference in how you want it set for dirt and tar. On tar you actually want more brake on the front than even on the dirt. And um, what I've done in the past is once I get the settings right for dirt and tar, I just mark the knob, and if I'm running the car on either dirt or tar, I can just instantly adjust it. Here's the factory Honda setup, a dual circuit master cylinder with two equal volume outputs that goes across to a block a lot of people think that this is a proportioning valve, and it's not. It's really just two Y pieces or T pieces joined together. There is a fail-safe system in there, but it's only, a, a, only got minor effect. There's no proportioning system there. It's just like a T piece. And so what I'll do as far as the front brakes are concerned is instead of one of those lines being the front brake and one is the back, I'll reconnect it so they're both on the same T piece. But in the case of the rear brakes, 
I'll run a single line direct from the master cylinder, which will go down and through the firewall, and it'll go straight out the transmission tunnel, a lot of parallel with the battery cable, and we'll put the adjuster next to the driver. Then the line will go from there out to the back and split into a T-piece and go to both rear wheels. When you're going to undo brake lines, whatever you do, don't use an open-ended spanner or, God forbid, ever a shifter. Because what will happen is if there's much resistance, that'll strip it, the nut, and you won't be able to get it on it. That, that spanner's fairly narrow and doesn't give you a lot of grip. But if you get the right tool, which this is, you can see how much thicker that is than the standard spanner. It's specifically designed for brake lines. And remember the red line mantra, number one, if you need a tool to save yourself money, go and buy it. So go and buy yourself a set of these. This will go right over the line. Bingo, no problems at all. You'll never strip a brake line with the proper tool. I'm going to move this junction box from here on the firewall to over on the side somewhere because I know from experience that when you do these swaps you need all the room you can get to clear the intake manifold from the firewall. So now's the time to move this to over here. There's the original two rear brake lines. I'll just cut those. The front brake line on the near side used to go up over here. I've routed it down the bottom. The front uh, near side wheel comes over to there. You can see I'm only using the top half of that uh, junction box now. There's the other front wheel and the line from the um, from the master cylinder. The rear line comes straight out of the master cylinder and goes out through the middle. This is the simple Wilwood bias adjuster you use with a factory brake master cylinder. change to something however like this brilliant Tilton setup a brake bias adjuster bar is incorporated into the system between the two master cylinders for long distance events even more exotic aftermarket braking equipment allows you to adjust the bias from the driver's rear seat on that adjusting bar